Okay, so resistance exercise increases mTOR activity. That increases the ability of LARP1 to help get our ribosomal messenger RNAs translated into ribosomal proteins, which can then increase the amount of ribosomal machinery we have to build to build uh, all of our new proteins. The second thing that happens, so there's a translational effect of resistance exercise on ribosome mass, and then there's also a transcriptional effect. And remember what we talked about before when we talked about transcription. Before, when we talk about other messenger RNAs, we talk about polymerase too. But because ribosome mass is so important, it has its own polymerase, polymerase 1. And this polymerase 1 is going to make that 47S ribosomal RNA that you're going to cut down into these other pieces that become the catalytic components of the ribosome. So the ribosome has the 18 and 28 and 5S ribosomal RNAs, which catalyze the addition of amino acids. And then there's a number of other factors here. So the first factor that we're going to talk about is this factor MYC. MYC is, a, is one of the most important proto-oncogenes. It's important in cancer. It's mutated in a myriad of human cancers. And what MYC does is it's a transcription factor that is a transcription factor for ribosomal RNA synthesis. The other transcription factor we have is this transcription factor SL1. And SL1 is composed of these three proteins, TAF-168, TAF TAF-110, and TAF-143. The only thing I want you to understand here is, yes, SL1 is three proteins, but all I want you to know is that, that SL1 is this um, important transcription factor for regulating ribosomal biogenesis, or ri ribosomal biogenesis. I don't need you to know the different TAFs, I just want you to know SL1. And SL1 can be regulated by acetylation, okay? And we'll talk about that as we go through this. And the last protein that's going to be important here is UBF, or upstream binding factor. And this is another transcription factor that increases ribosomal um, uh, RNA synthesis. And so UBF can be phosphorylated, and that's how it's regulated. And one thing that can phosphorylate UBF is mTOR, but we'll see that other things phosphorylate it, and its activity is when it's phosphorylated, you get more ribosomal RNA synthesis. Okay, so we're first going to talk about MYC and the role that MYC plays in ribosome uh, biogenesis after exercise. So if you look at MYC and you look after resistance exercise, so you do resistance exercise at zero and then you collect it three hours, six hours, 12, 18, and all the way out to 36, what you can see, and this is MYC mRNA, and MYC mRNA has a half-life of about 20 minutes. So that means that it, if it increases, it's going to come back down to half that level in 20 minutes, another half in 20, and you're going to get this exponential decay. So usually MYC, when MYC changes, it only changes for a very, very short period of time. After resistance exercise, MYC goes up about tenfold, comes down to about fivefold, and stays at about fivefold for about 18 hours. And that's really a very, very long time for something as significant as MYC to increase. And when we look and we say, okay, it's up really high at three hours, comes back down and stays about five-fold elevated out to 18 hours and then decays back to 36 hours. So that's, that's you know, that, that's got a really nice um, timeline. And that just means that we're constantly synthesizing MYC during this period post-resistance exercise. And if MYC is going to be important in ribosome biogenesis, then maybe that's going to be important. The other thing is the open circles here are all the um, animals that have been treated with rapamycin before the exercise. And what you can see is that there's no difference whether the animal got treated with rapamycin or didn't. So that means that MYC is activated or increased in a mTOR-independent mTOR -independent mechanism following resistance exercise. So MYC is up after resistance exercise, doesn't need mTOR to do that. The target genes for MYC, they're all going up around, you know, 12 hours after exercise. Again, MYC goes up and it's starting to increase things that are going to be important in, these things are all important, TAF1B, that was one of the TAFs that we showed you as being a transcription factor. MYC regulates how much of the TAF1 there is. It regulates nucleolin and, and nucleophosmin. These are things that, that cut the 47S ribosome into the 18 and the 28S ribosome. And again, all this is telling us 
is that MYC is up at 10 hours and it, the mRNA is up at 10 hours, you're going to get more protein, or sorry, at three hours, you're going to get more protein at six to, and having that more protein has caused us an increase in all of these target genes of MYC. So MYC is, is increased and that that leads to this increase in the accumulation of these target genes that happens at a level, you know, at around 12 hours after the exercise. Okay, so that tells us that MYC is increased by exercise. That increase is lasting almost 18 hours, and at least some of the target genes are activated for at around 12 hours after the exercise. Okay, next is going to be UBF. So what happens to UBF after exercise? Well, UBF is regulated by phosphorylation. So you can see here there's before exercise, there's after exercise. You can see that you get a big increase in UBF phosphorylation as early as one and a half hours, three hours. There's a little bit of a rapamycin effect where it slows the activation, but you can see that it, even if you keep going with rapamycin, the rapamycin sensitivity goes away by six hours so that UBF is becoming activated and it might have a little bit of an mTOR. It's being phosphorylated and activated. It might be a little bit dependent on mTOR complex one, but it's mostly, uh, something happening independent of mTOR complex one. 